Hey, what's up, guys? My name is uh, Coach Eric Scallon, uh, head instructor and owner of Gladiators Academy of Youngsville. And I'm real excited to bring this presentation to y'all today. We are talking about uh, uh, very specifically uh, realtor safety and self-defense. And also we're going to go over some uh, some general safety tips as well. Uh, this, this presentation is a little bit geared, a little bit more towards uh, women. But um, yeah, we, we still think it's very uh, beneficial for, uh, for male and females as well. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get started, guys. So who am I? Uh, I'm the owner of Gladiators Academy of Youngsville. All right, uh, I've been training martial arts probably since I was about eight years old. I started off uh, as an amateur wrestler. Um, I worked my way up. I wrestled in college. And then probably around uh, 19, 20 years old, um, I got into uh, mixed martial arts and eventually found my way and training to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Um, you know, so uh, yeah, I've been training uh, you know, combatives you know, probably for the, uh, the last uh, 20 something years. All right. Uh, I am a husband. And a father of two beautiful children. That's uh, L, my daughter, and my son Ty. All right. And uh, so, uh, what do I do at Gladiators Academy? Well, uh, you know, fighting is something I do uh, on, on a, a part-time basis. But really, we are uh, child child development experts. You know, we, we deal with kids anywhere from the ages of four uh, all the way up to uh, you know adults, uh, 55, 60 years old. All right. So. Um, why did I start training? How did I got, how did I get into martial arts? Well, uh, I'm, I'm gonna exper I'm gonna share an experience with you. When I was about 16 years old, uh, without going into too much detail, uh, I was assaulted, and um, I remember, you know, uh, very gra uh, very graphically and in much detail, you know, that feeling. You know, I, I remember I remember the look in the assailant's eye while he was strangling me. Right. I remember the helplessness. I remember the powerlessness. And I remember thinking, I am going to die. This is the moment that I'm going to die. I'm not going to make it out of this situation. I remember the panic um, that set in when you know the assailant let go and I was fleeing to get away. You know, and uh, that, that's something that uh, has haunted me for a very, very long time. But I made a decision that that was never going to happen to me again. All right, and this is look. This has come from a person who, you know, who wrestled and was very athletic, you know, his entire life. And but still, I was still 16 years old, and I was assaulted by a man, and there was nothing I can do about it. And that that feeling of powerlessness is, is something that uh, that uh, I never want to feel again. All right, and so there's something I, I, I want to get in y'all's head today is that this doesn't have to happen, and it, it won't happen again if we do uh, we do take the right steps uh, in training. All right. So, uh, what is Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? So, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, also known as BJJ, is a grappling form of martial arts. Uh, we use technique and leverage to defeat bigger and stronger opponents, guys. All right. So, um, why is Jiu Jitsu uh, so effective? Well, uh, it is a martial arts that's designed for 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 weaker people, right? Uh, it's not a martial arts that's designed, you know, for faster and explosive people. Now, certainly, this does work for them, but man, a lot of people who are a little bit more thought invoking. Uh, that can focus a lot more on technique and strategy tend to do uh, very well, and that's exactly what we need to do to pr prevent an assault. All right, so thinking systematically and in sequence. All right, knowing, hey, I'm going into a dangerous situation. What what potential threats do I see? What will I do if someone grabs me? What will I do if someone seems very uh, very suspicious? All right, and so the idea is that hey, we have a step-by-step -step process as to what's going to happen if we're put in in, in a um, uncomfortable situation. All right, oh man, and one thing in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, man, we learn how to be comfortable in uncomfortable situations. And as realtors, man, this is something that y'all y'all kind of naturally thrive at. And we're going to talk about that later. But being able to be uncomfortable. Being able to be comfortable in uncomfortable situations is key, guys, all right? Because in life, I mean, do you ever re really fully understand what's going on? We're always thrown into unsure situations, and we have to figure out on the fly very quickly, all right? And so Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and martial arts, you know, helps us stay calm, all right? Knowing your strengths and drill them, all right? So, um, you know, we're talking very specifically about martial arts here you know, but hey, uh, I, I'm really good at uh, taking people down. I'm a master of the arts of grabbing people and then throwing them on the ground, you know, rather violently. I need to drill that over and over and over again, you know, because if I don't, 
you know, when the time comes where I need to, you know, uh, I need to, uh, you know, if I get in a fight or maybe I'm attacked and I need to defend myself, if I'm not drilling this stuff regularly, um, it just, it just won't materialize. You know, I won't fight. I won't, maybe when I even flight, I'll probably just panic. All right. And so we're going to talk about, you know, Hey, what is the realtor's best weapons? Right. Okay. And we, so we want to see, Hey, what are you good at as a realtor? All right. What are your skills that you naturally have that can get you out of a funky situation? Okay. And that's what we're going to focus on today. When we talk about verbal jujitsu, verbal jujitsu is being able to talk your way out of a situation, right? Someone starts uh, crossing crossing certain boundaries, being able to stand with confidence, uh, you know, in, in a confident manner, in an aggressive manner, and being and being able to attack and fight with our words, because um, that's going to be our, our first line of defense. And also, you know, obviously, like we talked about, situational awareness. All right. One thing uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu teaches us is also, man, having balance in your life. I know sometimes in my personal life, you know, uh, like I'm so called, I have my family, I have my business, and I have my martial arts career, um, you know, and the, my, my coaching, and, and sometimes I think I can do everything. And uh, in the pursuit of, you know, chasing, maybe uh, chasing money, you know, uh, maybe, you know, I, I put other aspects of my life at risk. You know, when, when I'm in pr pursuit of the sale, um, you know, maybe sometimes I neglect my personal health or sometimes I neglect my relationships with my family. So one thing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and martial arts teaches us is to, um, you know, have a very, uh, a very stable life and well-balanced in every aspect of your life. All right. So uh, I, I bet a lot of you think this presentation is about me showing you what to do, um, when you're attacked and uh, how to defend yourself and how to break the wrist and, and walk away. And, and let me tell you the truth about mixed martial arts training uh, and weapons training. And the truth is, guys, is that, you know, if you are attacked by, you know, a, a bigger person, you are caught up by surprise, uh, you, you will be defeated. You will be assaulted. Uh, you could you could be killed, uh, possibly sexually assaulted. All right. Uh, we want to not get to the phase of, Hey, we're actually fighting this assailant off. We should never get to that situation. All right. I don't care if I train you for you know five years, five years of of steady martial arts training and and, and, and weapons training. You know, um, you know, as a female, um, you're going to be at a severe disadvantage. And and unless you're training regularly, uh, consistently, you know, you really. Uh, the ability to stay calm is very, very hard. All right. And so this is that when you have to defend yourself physically or with a weapon, that's a last ditch effort. All right. So we, we never want to get there. And the truth is, is that, Hey, we're going to stay safe, um, by, by screening our cl clients appropriately, appropriately, uh, taking them through the uh, correct pr uh, procedures and steps when you're showing a house or doing an open house, uh, looking towards some of the, uh, the the, uh, the warning signs of uh, if you're about to be attacked and what to do if someone crosses those boundaries, all right? So here's kind of a list of what we're we'll going over today. A little safety tips. Um, we'll talk about the triangle of victimization, strangers versus non-stranger attacks, uh, and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and let's get started, shall we? All right, so um, man, 33% of real estate professionals have experienced some situation that made them fear for their personal safety. All right, and why did this happen? Well, hey guys, we put ourselves out there, right? We do the open houses, we do the vacant homes, uh, we, go, we go check out a lot of vacant homes. Um, man, a lot of these properties are unlocked or unsecured, and you know people are not checking on these properties, these properties regularly. You know, there's an opportunity for vagrants to move in, or, or um, you know, or maybe you may deal with a um, you know a hard client, right? And they just refuse to meet you in a public place first, and they want to talk you out the correct procedure as, as to uh, showing a house. And uh, you know, sometimes we deal with properties out in re remote areas. So generally, look, you're going to strange places, meeting strange people, and uh, you know, it, it puts you at a risk of being isolated and being attacked. All right, all right. So I mean, hey, a typical realtor reported feeling unsafe less than less than half the year, but unsafe in, in terms of personal safety uh, very often, all right? So, man, there, there's a once or twice a year uh, uh, while you're at work, you're going to feel uneasy. There's going to be someone who's going to cross 
uh, cross those boundaries of, uh, of, of, of those personal boundaries and of personal safety. And um, yeah, so I mean, absolutely, this is a, a high risk job. Can this happen to me? Look, 5% of realtors have been a victim of crime, violent or not. So um, hey, sexual assault, robbery, identity theft. Um, you know, so look, 5%, hey, you got a 5% chance throughout your lifetime. You know, that's a pretty high risk, guys. All right. Um, so the self-defense weapons, guys, and I, I kind of make a little mockery out of this, you know, with uh, uh, the elderly lady throwing her dukes up and, and with the gun, um, you know. But hey, a, a lot of realtors, you know, they do uh, carry some form of a uh, defense weapon. And I do encourage this, right? So pepper spray, firearm, pocket knife, taser. Um, but here's the real question. How often do you practice? How often have you taken out your pepper spray and sprayed it? Have you ever been sprayed in the, uh, sprayed in the eyes? Because likely during a confrontation, you know, a lot of with the mist with the pepper spray, we, we, we may get a little bit in our eyes. Have, have we ever experienced that before? Is our pepper, pepper spray up to date? Is it expired? And, um, you, know, uh, you know, firearms are a little controversial. You know, I mean, there's a big risk of that firearm being taken away from you. How often do you practice? How often do you shoot? And yes, you you may go to a shooting range, but man, are you um, from that shooting range? You know, are you doing a, a combat scenario? You know, have you dealt with someone trying to take your gun away from you? Right. So uh, we really want to emphasize the importance of uh, you know, yes, absolutely. We want to have self defense weapons and self defense techniques. But this is our last line of defense, and honestly, look, if we're not training regularly, it's going to be no, it's going to be no use. All right, uh, smartphones and safety apps, guys. Um, we have a few people that use smartphone and safety apps, and look, uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail about this, but you know, but generally, guys, um, hey, are, are we letting people know? Uh, are we letting people know where we're going, who we're meeting with? Is this person qu uh, pre-qualified? You know, so uh, there's definitely um, the, the point is that there should be some type of practice, some type of procedure at your office where, um, you know, people are checking in on you or these per people are, are properly being screened. Okay. All right. So we're going to talk very general for a second, and then we're going to get very specific, uh, towards, uh, realtors, but the triangle of victimization. So in order for a sexual assault to take place, three things must happen, right? There needs to be a, an offender, there need to be a victim, and there has to be a location. All right. So what is the offender's motivation? How they plan on attacking you? Familiarity with the area, all right. So, does that offender do they do they know the area? Have it have they been to that vacant house before? Do they know how they're going to attack you? Do they have it planned out? And what is their motive, right? Are they trying to get money from you? Um, is there some type of uh, sexual gratification or just some type of power trip that, that they're trying to achieve uh, from attacking you? All right. The victim. This is what we're really going to focus on today. Is that person vulnerable? All right. Do, do you put your, set yourself up as a vulnerable target? Level of resistance. How how hard are you going to fight back? Right. I mean, hey, if I'm 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 soliciting a 60 year old lady uh, out to a remote area, how much resistance is she going to give me? And then the willingness to report a crime to a police. Right. You know, a lot of people, when, whenever you know, maybe someone uh, you know physically or verbally assaults them, you know, they're afraid to come forward. You know, how how is that person passive? Is that person aggressive? Is that person defensive? You know, so generally these people, you know, they seek out vulnerable targets, right? And uh, of course the locations, you know, uh, is it a confined space? Are there a lot of bushes around, right? Are they luring you into a house that maybe uh, you've never been into before? Or maybe they're showing you around the house instead of you showing them, you know? So um, are, are we mindful of our location? Okay, so first we're going to talk the uh, non-stranger, okay? And I'm sorry, this is the... This picture freaks me out, but it's probably the creepiest photo I, I, I could find, you know. And so this is someone that we know, all right. So generally, there's three phases of attack. There has to be an intrusion, a desensitization, desensitization, excuse me, and then a, a sexual assault, all right. So the first thing is intrusion. So these persons start to test your boundaries verbally, physically, sexually, right? You know, so they're going to test you like, oh, man, oh, you're looking, looking sexy today. Or maybe they uh, physically, they'll go ahead and maybe kind of touch the small of your back. Or maybe, maybe making sexual comments, all right? And the first thing, guys, we want to stress is that we have to shut this down right away. Immediately when this happens and a person is maybe crossing those personal boundaries or they start to nudge you a little bit, hey, we need to go ahead. We need to shut this down very firmly. And we're going to get into that in a second. Desensitization. So if we make the intrusion 
uh, acceptable and we don't reprimand it and we, we, we don't tell them, hey, this is unacceptable, it's going to continue, continue, and then eventually it's going to lead to uh, some type of uh, sec assault or some type of uh, sexual assault or uh, a robbery, all right? Uh, so, man, the verbal self-defense method, right? And so clearly stating your behavior, cut and dry, no sugar coat. Hey, I don't appreciate when you talk to me like that, all right? Hey, don't touch me again. This showing is over. I'm going to go wait outside, all right? Or, hey, when you when you talk like that, it freaks me out. Let's just, we're going to keep this conversation towards the house, all right? When, uh, hey, when, when, you, when you look at me like that, it's weird, okay? So don't do it again. All right, now does that sound like a person who's uh, giving this person an option? No, we're, we're, we're letting them know right away, uh, hey, this are my boundaries. You will, you will not cross this boundary, and this is, this is what I expect from you from here going on out. All right, and I'll tell you a quick little story, guys. So me and my wife, uh, we went to a, a bar in New Orleans called uh, Lucy's uh, Surf Bar. It's in, uh, off of Chapatulas. And look, and at this time, you know, me and my wife, you know, we had some drinks. And my wife was joking around. She's like, man, I need some gum. I need some gum. And there were some girls kind of sitting next to us who clearly had some gum. So I, so I said, look, hold on, honey. I got this. So I kind of jokingly, you know, strolled up to this per these people and kind of slid into action and slid into place and said, hey, how you doing? And I said, uh, do you mind if I get a piece of gum? It was something real simple. I asked them for a piece of gum. And, man, these girls shut me down. And they were just, excuse me, we're having a conversation. Thank you. Please leave us alone. And I'm, just, and I'm just frozen like, okay. And so I walk off and my wife's kind of laughing. It's like, what happened there? And I said, I don't know. I mean, she just started yelling at me, you know, and I just wanted a piece of gum. Doesn't this person know that I work with children and I'm a self-defense instructor, you know, and then kind of, and I was really mad about, I really was, I was very mad about the situation. And uh, so kind of later on, you know, I was thinking, I was like, man, you know, imagine these girls are sitting there by themselves, you know, some guy who's obviously intoxicated, walks up to him and starts having a conversation with him and it's unwanted. Whatever the situation may be, they didn't feel safe and they just said, hey, uh, get away from us. You know, and so my point is, is guys, you should never be afraid uh, to, to speak up for yourself. I'd rather you overreact than not react at all. Okay. All right. So here's some uh, different techniques that men who are trying to do you, they may try. And uh, most women are a, uh, a black belt at this, at this strategy. is called the broken record strategy. All right, so the broken record strategy is, hey, uh, you know, a guy's messing with you, he's talking to you, or maybe the conversation is not going where you want it. You make sure to say over and over again, stronger and louder every time what your desired outcome. Like, hey, I don't appreciate that comment. Don't do it again, right? And every time we escalate and, and we keep saying this, hey, this conversation's over, this saying, this showing is over, or uh, don't ever do that again, and we make sure we get firmer and louder every single time, all right? Um, you know, stand firm in your boundaries, guys, and this is the most important thing. You know, we teach people how to treat you, and if we present ourselves as a soft target, or if we don't set these boundaries, or we let people cross these boundaries, you know, then that's when a, a assault uh, happens, all right? And beware of, obviously, the we call it the conversational web. All right, so they, a guy maybe just keeps talking to you in circles, like, "Hey, uh, I want I want to meet you uh, at the house," and you explain to him, "Hey, well, look, I, I can't meet you at the house. It's uh, we're dropping. It's a company policy, right?" And yada yada, and they just keep talking in circles and keep giving you a, a, a reasons for this and for that. And be mindful of that, guys. You remember, you know, we, we want to put uh, safety over the sale, and uh, kind of like we stressed before, at any given moment, you fear for your uh, physical safety. You can push, you can slap, you can punch, you can yell, you can do anything. Do not be embarrassed. You are the victim. You are the victim, and this person has violated your personal boundaries, and you have to act uh, quickly and firmly. All right? All right. So uh, this is uh, an attack from a stranger. So again, we're kind of talking a little bit more generic right now, and we'll get into a little bit more of a very specific in a second. So strangers, and this is like the, common fear, uh, the most common fear uh, for most women. Uh, that they're going to be attacked by the homeless guy when you're out running or on a bike, um, or maybe just you know the creepy guy jumps out of the bush and attacks you. But in reality, that's uh, excuse me, my stats are off. I believe that that's only about uh, less than thirty percent of, uh, of of actually uh, assaults. All right, so so uh, mainly we're focusing on people that are not necessarily uh, strangers and people that we know. All right.
So what are these people looking for? All right, well, they're looking for, so what is the stranger looking for? Well, they have to identify the target. Uh, they understand uh, uh, that person, if that person's in a vulnerable situation, is that person aware of what's going on? Uh, what type of body language does this person have? Are they walking with confidence? Are, are they, did they check in beforehand, you know, or is it someone that maybe you can kind of talk over? All right. And then threaten the assessment. All right. All right. So this guy is, this person is not, uh, is not, doesn't seem to uh, physically dominating. You know, uh, they seem to be very isolated, um, not very verbal, not very confident. Hey, this is like an ideal target. If, uh, if, if, if I'm a, a stranger and a predator, that's what I'm thinking. All right. So they'll go ahead and they'll subdue the target any way possible. All right. And uh, see, exhaust the target. All right. How long do you really think you can fight off someone? And I really want to ask you this question. If you were attacked today, how long could you fight this person off? And the reality of it is that you're going to have this massive adrenaline dump and all these things that you say that you're going to do, that or you would gouge for the eyes and throw your purse and hit him with the elbow, and or you're going to kick him in the groin. I'm going to kick him in the groin, you know, but have you ever been in that situation? Will you, will you fight? Will you run? Or will you panic and will you freeze up? And But the reality of this situation is that once we start fighting this person off, these little techniques may work. But if this person keeps coming, if we don't scare this person away, if this person doesn't decide to abandon the attack, uh, we will be exhausted. Our adrenaline will, will leave us and next step is that we are sexually assaulted. All right, so exhaustion. You know, everyone has, you know, everyone has a plan until they're attacked and you know you go for something and it just doesn't work or you try this strategy and it doesn't work and eventually um hey it happens we get assaulted okay so let's talk about hey women prevention psychology the assertive versus the passive personality all right so generally uh people who are portrayed as weak uh they're, they're going to be soft targets all right uh predator will really attack an opponent who are perceived to have some type of strength right so this person's confident, maybe in shape, a little muscular. Um, hey, maybe, uh, even as simple as what type of shoes they're wearing. Is this person in, in, in high heels? You know, is, is this a soft target or not? All right, and it, it, and that's just a reality of the situation. If the if the woman is very assertive, if the woman is very aggra aggressive, this is not an ideal target. And that's where we want to make. And the trick is, guys, that we want to make ourselves the most unattractive uh, target possible. All right, when I mean unattractive, I mean as in, look, I'm walking with confidence. I'm talking with con confidence. I can stand up for myself. I'm quick. I'm witty. You know, I never let people uh, insult me or, or cross my boundaries, you know, and so, so that's what I mean, I mean by that, all right? Skills and traits you possess. I love this meme. Uh, one of my buddies is a realtor, and I saw him post this. And uh, say, how do you, uh, hey, did you know I'm a real estate agent? This guy is all up in this other person's grill. And uh, kind of get into his personal space. But what does this say, guys? Hey, as real estate agents, hey, y'all are out there. Y'all are like me. I'm, I'm in sales. And uh, hey, we have to be aggressive sometimes. We have to put ourselves out there. We have to put ourselves in weird situations sometimes. Or uh, if we're going to follow up with these leads, you know, it's going to take, uh, take some being aggressive, you know, uh, being outgoing. Uh, but hey, this is a skill that we can actually use to actually defend ourselves or, or warn someone off uh, verbally, need be. We're very decisive, right? If we make a decision, maybe we stick to it, all right? Uh, hey, we say something, uh, we mean it. We're not afraid to make a decision. We're not afraid to pull the trigger. Handle objections, right? Maybe someone, they, they keep giving you the runaround or, or why they want to see this room or or uh, why you know they should be able to meet you uh, at the house and, and, and not at a public place. You need to be able to handle those objections, all right? And if you do any type of sales training, guys, we, I know me and my staff, we drill rebuttals every week. Every time someone maybe has given us uh, a reason maybe not to sign up or they give us some type of, uh, um, some type of ex excuse or objection, we have a rebuttal ready, handy, ready to go. And I'm talking for any situation possible, all right? And we need to have the same mindset uh, when we're dealing with clients and maybe they're being a little bit uh, pushy. All right, people skills, guys. Y'all are naturally great interviewers. You meet people, you can you have a pretty good read on people. You can kind of get an idea of what this person's background is. Um, you know, uh, you know, maybe learn a bit, a little bit about what you can figure out. You know, what they want with what they're saying, and we're not afraid to ask questions and and dig deeper. 
all right? Uh, uh, being able, maybe the person's not being very forthcoming, you know, we can drill them. Say, hey, I, I, you know, how long have you been in the market? Uh, have you talked to another realtor before? You know, what do you want? And once we start asking questions, unless they're a complete sociopath, but they may be, they're not going to have their stories in line. And then our creep alarm may go off, all right? Guys, as realtors, you know how to pay attention to detail, all right? And we're going to talk about this uh, later on down the road, but we should be able to spot when something's off. Uh, maybe other spot whenever maybe we're going into a hazardous situation, all right? And then verbal jiu-jitsu, we're actually going to drill that today, guys. So, hey, what to do when someone crosses that boundary, right? I mean, y'all are y'all have the, the gift of gaff, right? Y'all have, y'all can talk. Y'all can talk, man. Y'all can talk yourself into a situation. You should be able to talk your, uh, talk your way out of a situation or buy yourself some precious time uh, so you're not uh, assaulted. Sail over safety. All right, and this is the main point of this presentation, guys. Why are, are we? Uh, why are realtors at risk so much? And it's because look, we, we, we put the sale over safety. And uh, guys, every industry is guilty of this. You know, man, I was in the oil field for a long time, and man, I did some risky, risky stuff because I was tired and I wanted to go home. And uh, you know, maybe I cut some corners. And and sometimes, uh, you know, you, you put yourself at risk when we do this. All right. Uh, so pushing hard for the sale, we ignore these warning signs, you know. So maybe hey, we're working late, and bam, uh, you know, you know we, we get hit up on um, well, someone um, contacts us on Facebook or Instagram, and I oh, mean they're excited about the showing and they want to see the house and they want to meet you at dawn. Come on, uh, come meet me right now. You know, did we pre-qualify this person? Did we even take the second just to? I always say this: go and Facebook stalk someone, and guys just. Look, we live, this is a presentation is given in Lafayette, Louisiana. This is a pretty small town. You can enter in a person's name and you can search them very easily on Facebook. And most males really don't have, um, you know, converted, you know, um, have hidden names. And you should be able to uh, find this person on Facebook. And from there, you can say, who do they know? Do they, and I do this all the time, like, you go and check out, do these people generally hang out with sketchy people that maybe uh, y'all are familiar with or... So you can tell a lot just by doing a quick search like that, all right? Or maybe you hey, add them on Facebook, you know, and, and see what they're really about. Now, obviously, we, we, we won't talk about this in this conversation, but, um, you know, making sure either we have a business account or a personal account that we don't expose too much information. But that's, that's going to be another talk, all right? Hey, is this a fast-paced industry? And we get very, very distracted, guys, you know, um, you know, sometimes, you know, hey, we want to follow up on that lead and we want to follow up right away, all right? And there uh, there have been studies to show that, hey, man, if you follow up on a lead within five minutes, you are 500 times more likely to uh, con convert that convert that sale, all right? And so, man, that's a powerful statistic. And that says that, you know, people are, you know, creatures of impulse. And, uh, but also, you know, hey, that person's looking at that time and we want to take advantage of that opportunity immediately. But hey, once we start doing that, guys, you know, without looking into who exactly we're talking to, we put ourselves at risk. All right. So, uh, so I want to go ahead and talk about this study, uh, done by the FBI. And so look, the majority of attacks are crime of easy opportunity. All right. And, uh, so guys, we don't want to be an easy target. All right. So what the FBI did and, um, uh, they went ahead and they had a bunch of um, a, a bunch of robbers that they've arrested in the past, and you know like they brought them to a neighborhood and they said, look, they let them loose and they said, look, I want you to go ahead and what house, what house would you uh, break into? All right, so they let these guys loose and they said, all right, and they picked this house and they picked this house, and you know the FBI agents were a little astonished and, and they said, well, why? Well, what did you do? And he said, well, I walked up to the first house and I tried to open the door and it was locked. So I walked to the next house and I tried to wiggle the door and it was locked. So I went to the next door, the door was open and I walked in. All right. So what's the moral of the story, guys? Is that hey, you know, uh, don't be an easy target. Something as simple, and that's what this talk is is about, guys. I'm not going to show you some magic wrist lock or the touch of death that's going to save your life. All right. We're going to talk about just real, real basic, real common self defense and not putting yourself in a vulnerable situation will save your life. All right. So don't be a victim by being prepared being prepared, being prepared, all right? So that means locking doors, setting the alarm, letting people know where you're going, always traveling in pairs, you know, if you're going to an isolated uh, situation, all right? Um, so I have this story uh, about my mother-in-law. She she, uh, she babysits, um, you know, every uh, every so often, you know, so me and my wife, I can work and my wife can go work out. 
But man, every time uh, I, I want to come in through my garage, bam, she's got like the deadbolt, you know, the regular lock and the top lock. I'm pretty sure she has it barricaded with a dresser or something. But man, every time I try to just go into my garage and just walk into my house, bam, I got to go through just three different steps and a passcode to get in. And sometimes I get really aggravated with this, but the reality of the situation, hey, my mother-in-law is, you know, over 55. And, uh, you know, if some stranger would just uh, maybe knock on the doors for some strange reason, and they, they could very easily push themselves into the house, you know, so... So um, she practices very uh, some very common self, uh, very common self self defense that is very high percentage. And that's one thing uh, you know I train in mixed martial arts and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And that's one thing I teach all my students is guys we want to go for high percentage moves, you know things that are going to work the majority of the time. What's the easiest thing to learn? Uh, the fastest, right? Because how many of you are actually really going to you know drill and practice? Probably not. But hey, if we instill you know it's, it's just some some basic techniques. You know, this is, um, this will help us a lot. All right. So say hello for safety. Hello. Is it lead you're looking for? You like that? You like that? Okay, cool. So the dangers of social media. All right, guys. Sometimes, like, again, we, we put ourselves out there, especially with social media. All right. So, but we have to be very, very thoughtful uh, of what we post and, and, and how we're posting. Guys, this is a social media age. If you're not on social media, guess what? You're behind. You're falling behind. And you're going to be left in the dirt. All right. The, the industry is constantly changing, constantly evolving, and we need to be a step ahead of the game. And that means being on Facebook, social, uh, Instagram, being on YouTube, being on Pinterest. You want to be everywhere. All right. You want to be so like, man, someone, it's like they can't get away from you. All right. And that's how, that's how we're successful in sales, that we're successful in telling our story, telling our story, telling, talking about our success stories. And we play the long game, guys. We, we put our stuff out there. And guys, I have people that come in. that are, I've been watching your videos for two years, and now I'm ready to buy. And that's how it works, guys. However, we put ourselves at risk sometimes. You know, sometimes I'll see a realtor. You know, they'll check in at an open house and say, hey, guys, uh, by myself out here in the middle of Erath. Y'all come check me out. You know, but, but just some uh, something real simple, you know, by saying, hey, guys, we got a bunch of people that, that have been coming to this open house. You know, uh, don't miss out on this on this opportunity. Uh, we are here. You know, so not saying I am here, but we are here. So don't put yourself out there. Don't tell people, hey, I'm by myself in an isolated area. Uh, man, bring up. Why can't you bring a rookie realtor with you? You know, I, uh, th there's no reason why you know we shouldn't be able to grab you know uh, you know people who are kind of new to our industry or people who are trying to get their foot in the door. And yeah, hey, let them tag tag along. You know, because guys, we're safer in numbers. We make ourselves a uh, a more uh, so you got an unattractive target uh, if, if we travel in numbers. All right. So uh, digging through the dirt to get to the gold. All right. Um, so what I'm talking about here, guys, is so I actually adapted a, a new system uh, with my gym. All right. And, uh, you know, and sometimes, you know, hey, you got to dig through some dirt to get to some gold. So that means like, you know, you know, we put ourselves out there a little more. You know, we, we give away um, – more free trials and we give away you know a lot of free offers and generally these leads that we get they're not as refined as a, someone who's already kind of made the purchase you know so whenever so whenever we do the these techniques and we get these spontaneous uh responses and next thing you know you know they contact us and within five minutes we're talking to them and then we're bringing them in for a a, a, a private lesson or i guess in y'all's case you'd be bringing them for a showing and unfortunately, you know, this stuff works, but man, uh, we deal with some sketchy people sometimes. I'll, I'll talk to someone on Facebook and yeah, we'll get him in, we'll get him in. Next thing you know, this guy told me that he walked an hour and a half because he doesn't have a car. Guys, guys, he looks a pretty, like, he looks like he's on drugs, I'll be honest. And he looks just look really sketchy, you know, and I, I've dealt with this even with dealing with parents, you know, uh, you know, we, we, we bring in a lot of free trials and we give away a lot of things and you know, we uh, we put ourselves out there. We tend to get uh, some uh, less consistent cl uh, clients. But, however, guys, you know, easy sales are easy sales. But if you really want to be successful, sometimes you have to sort your way through some of those poor leads in order to get to the goal. And, unfortunately, by doing that, by, by contacting more people and putting ourselves out there to people that are maybe not as qualified – 
uh, we put ourselves at risk. So when I say uh, key performance, uh, KPIs, I mean key performance indicators. So, hey, so we get more leads. Uh, once we get more leads, we can uh, set more appointments. And from those appointments that we set, we can either set follow-ups or we can close on a deal. So this, uh, this is universal, guys. This uh, applies to every industry. And so I'm asking you, that, hey, while you're putting yourself out there and you're gaining all these leads, um, be mindful and, and sort through these leads correctly. All right? So be, be mindful of that. All right? So what we want to talk about is mental preparation, you know, and uh, – I'll give you a quick story, guys. I look, um, whenever I compete for a mixed martial art, uh, March match, um, I, I'm mental preparation is 95% of what's going to win me the fight. All right. Do I know my opponent? Do I know his tendencies? Do I know what arena I'm fighting in? What's the crowd going to be like? What's it going to smell like in there? What does the cage feel like? What does the canvas feel like on my feet? Is, uh, is there any soft spots on the, uh, in the cage? Does my opponent shows any tendencies? Is he aggressive? You know, so before I, I, I whenever I put myself in a combat situation, the, the the amount of hours and hours of rehearsal and mental mental preparation, and I'm not even talking about practice, right? So sometimes you know I may drill a certain set of punches and certain set of kicks and takedowns and of uh, things that I would do in a situation, but a lot of it when I'm not doing that, I mentally prepare for every situation. What, you know, what would I do if, uh, you know, the guy, um, you know, is real heavy with his body kicks? How would I defend that? What would I do if I got rocked and, and I got punched and got knocked to the ground? What would I do? And I rehearse every possible situation and every possible outcome before I step into a fight. All right. These are universal uh, martial arts principles. I want to reference the uh, book of – it's called uh, A Book of Five, Ring, uh, five Rings. Um I can't even pronounce the uh, the author's name, but it was written about in about the 1600s. And these are basic uh, samurai um, hand-to-hand -hand combat techniques. All right, and these are universal principles that apply in every combat situation. You know, since the dawn of time, this applies to everything. So I'll reference that book towards the end. All right, but man, let me ask you this: How often do you train situations? Uh, do you role play? All right, so. Um, how often do you train the situation of, hey, the, this guy wants to, doesn't want to meet me at Spar Starbucks? What would you say? All right. W what is your rebuttal? You know, are you going to say, hey, guys, you know, this is uh, exciting. Yeah, look, there's been a lot of tax lately. Uh, it's company policy. You know, even though that's probably not true, I, I love doing that. Oh, guys, it's our company policy. Uh, you know, this is our procedure. You know, we have to meet here before we go anywhere else. And, uh, hey, they don't want to do it. Well, hey, sorry, we're, we're not going to work with you. Will you miss out on some sales because of that? Yeah. Will you survive? Will you go home? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what would you say? What would you say if someone made, uh, you know, you walk into the bedroom and say, hey, this is where the magic happens. What is your response going to be? Are you going to quickly say, hey, that's really inappropriate. I appreciate it. Don't, don't talk to me like that. I mean, are you going to set your boundaries right away? What are you going to do when uh, you know the, the person's real adamant about maybe seeing a basement or, or seeing a, a, a maybe maybe a back house that you, you don't feel is a, is a safe place to go? Well, what would you say? Hey, uh, I, I want to go check out the basement, or I want to check out the I don't know the, this this hidden uh, this attic or whatever it may be. And you can say, hey, look, uh, look, I've been in there a million times. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead. And I'm, I'm gonna stay right here. Or oh, man, I gotta go catch this phone call real quick. You go ahead and do that. Uh, I'll, I'll be outside real quick. All right. So uh, what would you say? What would you do? Where are you going to park? How are you going to meet this person? You know, um, one thing I really love, uh, uh, you know, when, when you pull up to, when you meet a person for the first time, you you, you uh, get to a, a certain house, you know, uh, be on the phone. Hey, talking to your quote unquote supervisor. Hey, yeah, I just got to the house. He just walked up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Call me in five minutes. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll let you know uh, when, when we get into the house or I'll let you know uh, when we're done. So that way that person knows, hey, this person has someone checking in with them. This is not going to be an easy target. It's probably, it probably isn't my best opportunity. All right. Uh, what would you do in growth? What would you do if someone grabs you? How are you, how are you going to react? All right. Hey, this showing is over. I'm going to be outside. All right. I'm out of here. And have you practice that over and over and over again, guys. All right. So mental preparation is going to reduce you from panicking. All right. So you may say, yeah, hey, a guy touches me. I'm going to tell him what's up. What are you going to tell them? What are you going to tell them? Take your effing hands off me. Right? Oh, curse. I want you to curse. All right? I want you to curse. Okay? Be firm. 
be sturdy, all right? Know exactly what you're going to say and what you're going to do and mean it, all right? And let this person know that you mean business, all right? And you're not a need to target. We teach people how to treat you. Are you aware of your surroundings, all right? So, uh, man, are, is the door open already? Is it a well-lit area? Is there a lot of, uh, is there a lot of bushes, you know? So maybe make sure, um, you know, um, uh, at the lockbox, make sure we, we know that the uh, we know the combination to the lockbox. Or maybe you're not sure. Say, hey, hey, hang on right here. Let me go uh, check this lockbox real quick. Make sure I have the right code. And uh, man, I also want to make sure this place is cleaned up properly. I think maybe the last person you showed this place didn't clean up. Let me let, let, let me go in real quick. So you can go while this person is away from you. Uh, you can go and unlock the door. You can walk through the house. You can unlock the back door. You can unlock a side door. You can kind of get a quick. Maybe if you haven't been in the house before. Or in a while, you can take a quick little walkthrough real quick, uh, you know, and, uh, and make sure that, you know, hey, th 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 there's no surprises waiting for you. And then you can go back. So, all right, come on in. All right. So uh, being, being mentally prepared. All right. So uh, I want to tell you this quick little story real quick. There was this, uh, this realtor, and, um, you know, we talked about using good observation skills, right? So this realtor, she's going to go show a house, or she's about to go show a house, and she pulls up. And she noticed that you know, this is a vacant house, and she knows, noticed some cigarette cans, uh, some, some cigarette buds, and some empty Coke cans. So instead of walking up to the front door, she kind of peeks around the side, and she also sees, hey, more Coke cans. And, and it's very evident that someone is staying here. So she immediately leaves the situation. She calls a cop, and sure enough, uh, there was four fugitives that broke out of, a, uh, out of a facility, and they were held up there. What if this person would not have been mentally prepared? What if this person would have just walked into the house? What if the person wouldn't have scouted out the area or used their 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 their, their natural realtor skills to observe the situation and uh, defuse an attack from happening? All right. What are you fighting for, guys? Um, I, I tell you this, guys. Uh, I'm going home. I'm going home at the end of the day. All right. And I don't care. Uh, I don't care what happens. You know, I'm not uh, putting my life at risk. Okay, and uh, I, I can share this with you about my martial arts career. Um, I will never step into a fight unprepared. If I haven't been training, or I haven't, you know, if I'm not in shape, or my weight's real off, you know, or maybe a, a guy is above my skill set, I mean, drastically, I will not fight that person. I will not put myself at risk. Why? Because it's not fair to my family. It's not fair to my family that I have some selfish. Some selfish goal, whether it be uh, you know, fame or or th this one dream. I maybe I've been chasing, or maybe the money, right? Maybe um, you know I've been in situations before where maybe uh, maybe I wasn't in the best of shape, and man, but the pay was really good, and you know, or maybe I sustained an injury during a training camp, and I took the fight anyway. And uh, anytime I've done that, guys, you know, um, I, I've risked I've risked injury, and um, you know, and. Uh, Maybe possibly maybe taking years off my life because of it. So what I'm trying to say, guys, is guys, you should never put your uh, put a sale over going home to your family. You know, uh, is, is that fair for you? You know, for your daughter not to have a a mother or father because you were trying to be you know a salesperson of the year. You know, so you gotta understand what you're fighting for. And let me let me tell you this, guys. Um, you know, uh, you can you can chase the dollar all you want. All right, and uh, like the end of the day, I promise you, if you're not waking up. And you're not happy with your family. You're not happy with your physical life and appearance. You don't have good relationships with people. Uh, it doesn't matter how much money you have. And that's something that some people may have to find out for themselves. You know, when they finally get the dollar and they look around and uh, maybe they sacrificed a little too much. So anyway, I got a little topic there, but a little mental note there. Okay. So I'm coming home no matter what. All right. So we'll go ahead and uh, uh, I'm going to hand out a worksheet, guys. And I'm, you're going to have an attached worksheet. And I, I, we're going to give very specific questions. I want you to go ahead and answer it at that time. And, um, you know, what would, what, what would you, what is an awkward situation that you have been in? I want you to write that down for me. Okay. And you're, you're a specific example because you're going to know better than me. When has someone made you feel uneasy? What did they say and what did they do? Write that down. Now, the next time that happens, what are you going to say? What are you going to do? All right, so let's go ahead and complete that worksheet now. All right, so that's mental preparation. Uh, here's uh, some physical preparation. We got to stay in shape. Stay in shape. And do you know how out of shape you really are? And we kind of talked about this before, guys, with the, the adrenaline dump, right? Uh, guys, I deal with uh, guys that come in and, it, and and they believe they're in phenomenal shape. They really do. They do CrossFit. They do weightlifting. They play college ball. 
I mean, these guys, some of these guys that come in and come train with me, they're no slouches. They are, they are athletes in every sense of the word. But man, um, what do you, panic and adrenaline changes everything. Being caught off guard changes everything. And every new person who has ever walked into our facility, I've never had a new person walk into our facility and they didn't leave just just breathing heavy you know they, they were challenged they were challenged and they were put in some uncomfortable situations and look and a lot I will, we'll go with some guys that are you know some big meatheads and they'll come wrestle around with us and man after two minutes they're saying stop 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 and i'm saying well look we got three more minutes we can't stop and event you know obviously it's their first class and we stop it and at that time we explained to them that hey you know that one of the keys to defend yourself is staying calm situational awareness knowing where you're at at all times knowing what you're going up against um, and explain to them, hey, this takes time, this takes drilling, and this takes practice, you know. So uh, do you practice, guys? Uh, if you carry mace, taser, and gun, do you practice? Do you go to the shooting range? Do you do combat scenarios? Have you ever dealt with a situation where you're trying to pull out your gun and someone grabs your gun? Do you even have your gun on you? Oh, my goodness. I mean, one time, I mean, this is just, uh, you could tell this. Uh, I was riding a taxi cab, me and four of my buddies, and we had to do like an hour, like a 90-minute trip. Anyway, the whole time we're there, this girl's gun was in the center console, and as she's driving, her gun is literally like swinging and falling out of place, falling on the ground, falling next to me, falling in the back seat, and finally, I, I took this girl's gun, and I, I stashed it. I said, look, I'm going to put this here, okay, because you're going to get us killed, <laughs> all right? So the girl, you know, hey, she's a taxi driver. She had every good intention. Dude, she was under, I mean, her gun was very visible, and it was all over the place, and, and, and I it was in my possession rather than hers, right? So thank God she was in the car with me, and I was actually with another police officer as well, all right? Uh, roll, uh, and I really want to stress role-playing, guys. Oh, man, uh, every, this should be every Monday. Every Monday, we should have, y'all should have a safety meet and say, hey, guys, do we have any close calls? Oh, yeah, I had this guy, you know, he was kind of giving me the pretty eyes, and I kind of just, hey, I let him know about my boyfriend and said, hey, I'll be, I'll be outside. All right. Um, you know, I, I really love dropping. It's our policy. Like, like we said before, uh, Hey, it's our policy that we meet at the Starbucks. Oh, it's our policy that you pre-qualify. Hey, it's our policy that this person comes along with me or, you know, um, or just, uh, letting them know, Hey, this person's coming with me. Um, it, it's just part of our policy. It just, it just is what it is. And so it leaves that the, there's no debate. They're not sucking you into that web of lies. Oh, come on. Uh, 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 come check out this basement with me or come check out this back room with me. You know, no, you, you use that, our, our made up policies to get you out of that situation. This is very important guys, the shark nudge. All right. So what is the shark nudge? All right. So a shark, when they're, maybe they're roaming through open waters and they see a potential, uh, a potential, uh, prey, they go ahead and they give it a little nudge. All right. They give it a little bump and they want to see how is that person going to react? All right. How are they going to react? And they say, man, you looking like that skirt. Oh, man. I mean, and you're walking with confidence, girl. You know, they drop the girl, right? The G-U-R-L, girl. Or, or, you know, so something creepy, guys. You know, whatever it may be, sexual comments, you know, they're touching you. Or maybe they just keep bringing the conversation off the house and onto your personal life, you know. And so and this will, this will happen whether the person's a stranger or maybe it's someone we've been working with for some time, guys. Never underestimate the, the the creepiness of a guy. You may be dealing with a guy for some time, and then all of a sudden, even the guy's married. You know, he may start saying some inappropriate things and may start to test those boundaries a little bit. You know, so be mindful of the shark nudge. Hey, they say something inappropriate, bam, shut them down right away. Inappropriate, inappropriate touch, shut them down right away. Maybe they start to lead the house, right? Instead of you showing the house, we shut them down right away, all right? Uh, body language, all right? This body language is one of the main factors to determine if you're a victim or not, all right? And this is universal, guys, all right? This has been, uh, this is something that's been practiced and, you know, people who practice with a freaking sword and a katana, uh, you know, or uh, even a person who practices with a gun or someone who does hand-to-hand -hand combat, how do we carry ourselves, you know? What's the look that we have in our eye? It's funny, uh, in, in the Book of Five Rings, they talk about exactly how you should look how you should stand, and you shouldn't be too hyped up, but you shouldn't be too calm, right? So it talks about being focused, not being overly aggressive, not being um, not being passive, 
right? So these are universal principles that have been around since, since the beginning of time. What does your body language say? Do you command presence when you walk into that room, all right? Are you in charge? Is this person lead, leading the conversation, right? All right, uh, are, you, are you messing around with on your phone and kind of dealing with the pan, different pamphlets? Are you looking down? Maybe you don't make eye contact. I mean, I, look, I just hired a new front desk person. This person never makes eye contact with anyone, you know, and I got to tell them, you know, you got to, you, you got to talk to these people, right? You got to go out there and you got to put yourself out there, you know, you have to, and, and, and the way you posture yourself, are you slouched over? Do you shy away? Do you shy away when they say something aggressive, you know? So this is going to be your number one, one of your, one of your top lines of uh, self-defense, all right? So, uh, you know, being prepared, being, uh, being aware of your surroundings, being aware uh, what type of person that you may be meeting just by, hey, just doing some simple Google searches and then present your, present yourself like a confident and uh, when I say uh, unattractive target, right? Um, and a physical preparation, guys. So you don't need to learn 30 ways to uh, defend yourself. You need three, probably I'd say uh, two to three physical responses. What to do if someone grabs your wrist, someone grabs your neck, someone grabs you from behind, what is your physical response going to be? What if this guy's making a move towards you? What are you going to do? You got to hit hard. You have to hit fast. You have to break away and get to a public area and get someone's attention. Don't go and call your boss right away. No, you call the police. You call it. It baffles me how many people they don't call the police right away. You know, so sometimes we may get away. We're calling our girlfriend, and you know, no help is on the way. All right, maybe we run off. We go to our neighbor's house. So look, the idea is that we want to use our natural God-given talents as realtors, all right? Make a decision. If we're going to strike, we're going to strike them, right? We already have, uh, we're organized, right? We pay attention to detail. We know what we're going to do beforehand, all right? And if, guys, if we don't drill this on a regular basis, it's not going to work. Or uh, if we are in a physical situation for an extended period of time, exhaustion sets in. So what does poor mental and physical preparation looks like? This will never happen to me. All right, look, I'm a guy. This, this, I mean, obviously, this is geared towards women, but look, I'm a guy. I work out. I did karate at the YMCA for a little bit. Or uh, yeah, even, hey, maybe I go, I'll get cocky, right? Or see, I'm a, I'm a martial arts fighter. No one's going to mess with me. Man, what am I going to do if someone puts a gun to the back of my head? What's my martial arts training going to do for me then? It's going to be nothing, okay? What am I going to do if I get attacked by three people, all right? I've, I've actually... I've, <laughs> I fought off two people before in my younger days, right? I don't recommend that, but man, you're, the, the, the odds are, are very much stacked against me, all right? So, uh, you know, especially for me uh, and for personally, I can never be too cocky. People don't know that I've trained martial arts. People don't know that maybe I am I am somewhat athletic. You know, I had a, a buddy of mine. He was a collegiate wrestler. He was an All-American. You know what that means? It means he's really, really good, Okay. He's really good. He's very strong. He's very big. He's very scary looking, right? He's got some gnawed up ears, some cauliflower ear like myself. Uh, he was in New Orleans. He was leaving training. He was leaving his gym. A guy put a gun to him and said, hey, give me your money. This guy, I mean, uh, there, there's no chill sometimes with uh, these assailants, guys, all right? Uh, maybe we're distracted during our initial contact, all right? So, uh, so maybe we're, uh, you know, we're a little distracted, right? We're a little distracted. We're not paying attention. We pull up in a dark area. We pulled up in an area that maybe, um, maybe we can't get out of very quickly. I mean, um, you know, we didn't uh, go and uh, unlock. We don't even know the combination to to the lockbox beforehand. You know, so some type of way we're distracted. Uh, man, I had a realtor, and look, and obviously I was, I was uh, qualified before, but man, she actually showed me the house uh, with her kids, and um, you know, at that time I didn't think there was anything unusual about that, but. Um, you know, I would definitely recommend, you know, man, don't put yourself in a, a vulnerable situation. Don't be distracted. You know, sometimes, you know, a lot of us are stay-at-homes or, or maybe we're doing this uh, part-time and uh, we may not be focused. Uh, or we may uh, put ourselves in a bad situation. All right. So maybe distracted during the showing. Are you leading the tour? Is this guy saying, hey, why don't you come on? Let's go check out this room. You know, no. Uh, guys, I'll make this very clear. Like when I have, for me, when I have a, a, a new person uh, walk into my gym, or especially like a, a person calls me and they say, um, it's a little bit of my marketing technique and business strategy. So, uh, people call me and say, what's the price? And no matter what they say, 
we're starting off right at the top of the, the, the you know, the sales presentation. Oh, great. Uh, what's your name? How'd you hear about us? Okay, okay. So uh, why exactly do you want to get your child involved, involved in martial arts? And they'll say, well, I, I just want to know how much it is. Oh, great. Well, hey, I need to get a little bit more information, you know, so uh, we can uh, figure out the right plan that best suits your needs. And then immediately, bam, I'm following up with another question. So the point is, like, is this disingenuous? No, absolutely. I'm just taking cold, taking control of the conversation, right? I'm trying to uh, go through a step-by-step -step process, you know, because this is how our process is. This is how our pres the price presentation is, is given. You should have the same mentality, guys. Uh, no, I'm sorry. So this is the way I, I, I show houses. Why don't you uh, go, uh, be my guest? Be my guest, right? You, know, you, you go ahead. You walk before me, all right? I, I want you to. I want, I want to see your reaction. You know, um, what are you going to say? You know, what are you going to say when, when uh, the person's maybe not being very talkative? Right. How, how do you how are you going to re, uh, re respond to that? You know, or you are, you start immediately. Hey, have you worked with another realtor before? What type of house? You know, so we use our interviewing skills to kind of bring out conversation. Is that person you know looking around? Right. Are they, when they walk out, are they even interested in the house? Or are they just looking around to, to check out the neighbors? Or maybe their their attention is a little bit more focused on you rather than the actual house. All right. So situational awareness, guys. Um, yeah, so a planning the, the objections. Hey, the guy's getting, I like this one. The guy's getting a little weird on you. Hey, man, let me go ahead. I'll tell you what, let, let, me, let me look into this price real quick. And you can go ahead and call and say, guys, I need the red file. And the red file is code word for, guys, I'm in help. I need help right now. All right. And there should be a, a set response that your company um, has in the play. Uh, man, expensive jewelry. You know, so sometimes, you know, we want to floss a little bit. We want to drive a nice car. We want to dress nice. And we want to show people, you know, um, we want to show people really, you know, how um, how good we are at a job, you know. And uh, but hey, this could be a poor decision. So, what is the ideal mental state? All right. So, like I said, and like they say in the book of five rings, guys, I don't want to be too excited, and I don't want to be uh, too calm. I want to be, I want to be focused. I want to be, I want to be engaged. I want to be upbeat. All right. So, engaging in that initial contact. They walk in, bam, we're asking questions right away. Right. Do they pre-qualify, right? Uh, and then generally, we, we, this person had this person done financing before. Have we collected their information? Uh, what do we know about them? Um, do, do we get a photo of their uh, a, 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 a double-sided copy of their driver's license, right? So that th there's uh, certain things that we can do to kind of check into this person, all right? Um, yeah. So so uh, look, when I say this, judge a book by its cover, right? Discriminate. Look. We're talking about your life here, and some guy is maybe he you know you're showing a pretty expensive house, and he shows up in a he shows up in a hoopty, or maybe he shows up in just a, a banged up car or El Camino or whatever it may be. I mean, if this this person is, don't be afraid to cry wolf, right? You see something sketchy, you know, hey, discriminate because if you if you don't discriminate, then you may put yourself in a vulnerable situation, right? Um, you know, so I know, I know off, off sometimes, you know, we don't want to discriminate, you know, we don't want to, uh, this guy doesn't look like he can afford this house. Well, look, don't make the sale. You're going home at the end of the day, you know? So, but you really guys just trust your instinct, trust your instinct. And maybe look, if you mess up and you know, don't be, Hey, look, I, I was a little uneasy at first. I wasn't too sure about you. Things happen real fast. It's kind of against our policy and procedure, the way things go. So I was a little worried at first. Look, if you lose a sale, you lose a sale. Or if they're, they're a reasonable person, you go back and you explain the situation, right? Um, yeah. So, like, how do you show the house? Where do you stand? You know, do you, again, do we know all the uh, – in an open house, are we in a central location? Do we know where all the exit points uh, are, all right? And, again, you run the show, all right? Oh, I want to see this back room right here. Yes, that's great. Oh, awesome. I'm going to show that room in a second. Let's go check out this room first, okay? You know, you're in control, guys. And, look, uh, look I, I have people – Man, sometimes uh, they'll, uh, they'll, they'll be on the phone with me, and they'll say, like, I just want another price. I just want another price, and they don't want to follow my policy. And I'll just say, hey, look, whenever you're ready to um, come in, I'll be more than happy to give you a price presentation, all right? And look, and they, they want to be rude. <laughs> and if they want to be really rude, then, hey, we'll go ahead and say, you know what? We're very expensive, and we're full, all right? Not everyone is your customer. Remember that. Don't get greedy and say you need all, everyone, right? No, you need, the, you need the right leads. You need the right clients, right? Don't be distracted. Hey, and watch their body language. Watch what they say. Uh, watch what they say or what they don't say. Right. So we talked about: is there attention on the house? Is it on you? Ideal physical state. We're prepared but not paranoid. We keep that that comfort level. Right. We never let that shark net bust our comfort bubble. 
uh, command presence, all right? So standing at attention, walking and talking with confidence, being 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 someone, um, being someone that demands presence, right? Um, do you have your defensive tools handy, right? Is your gun with you? Is your mace with you, right? How, how often have you been practicing? And generally, rule of thumb, I, I explain to people, guys, that look, you have to do something. You have to do something a thousand times. A uh, thousand times, thousand hours, whatever it may be, in order to really master a technique, in order to do a, to do a technique uh, without even thinking twice about it, guys. And that's the state that we have to get to if we're going to uh, defend ourselves. All right, all right, um, cool. How do you know you're in trouble? Conversations off the house is on you. Uh, no conversation, one word replies. They hit you with the sark nudge. Where's their attention? And he's even moving you around the house. All right, it's time to act. All right, this guy has crossed our boundaries. Strong verbal response. Get your effing hands off me. All right. That's really inappropriate. Don't ever effing touch me again. All right. Oh, oh, do we have that strong verbal response? Curse, guys. I want you to curse. Okay. Get outside your comfort level. You want to strike hard. You want to strike fast and let them know you mean business. All right. Know your plan and have an immediate excuse to leave. Hey, gotta go get that red file. I'll be I'll be right back. All right. All right. I'm done showing the house. All right. And look. You do what you train. You do what you train, guys. And, and that's the reality of the situation. Uh, I've been in a lot of mixed, mixed martial arts fights. And whatever I prepared for mentally or whatever I did in my training camp, that's what I do. And it's funny, man. Every time, see, sometimes uh, uh, my teaching curriculum actually shows up. I mean, I'm not necessarily training this stuff, you know, for my fight. But sometimes, uh, very, very often, you know, um, I'm in a fight and I'll perform a very basic self-defense technique that I may have taught in my kids' class. And why is this? It's because I'm, I do it on a regular basis. I teach it. I explain it to people. I break it down. So that's the technique, I, honestly, that I, I, I spend most of my energy uh, focusing on. So um, you do what you train, guys. That's the reality of the situation. You're either going to fight, you're going to flight, or you're going to freeze up and get, or you're going to panic. Get angry. Get angry. Show them business. Practice your snarl in the mirror, right? The snarl, you flare up, right? You growl a little bit. Hey, it's time to get nasty. It's time to let these people that we know me, uh, know mean business. Hey, man, what are you going to do? What are you going to do when a person grabs your wrist? What are you going to do uh, when someone attempts to grab you and misses? You know, are you going to take your purse? Are you going to throw it away? You know, Are you going to run? Are you going to call the police? What's your plan of action? And then you need to drill that. We need to talk about it every single day. We need to talk about it and, and, and go over it. Uh, verbally, verbally and you know physically actually actually you know, practice it with a friend go into a house you know have someone reenact it guys all right I, I can't you can never overtrain you're only going to just perform better all right guys so uh, so at this time uh, I hope you enjoyed this presentation I mean I really hope that we can um, that you understand you know what this what your first line of self-defense is and that is using your god-given ability as a realtor uh, to defend yourself and not putting yourself in vulnerable situations. All right, guys. So use your your gift of gaff, your ability to talk your way out of situation. Use your interviewing skills to uh, to research that person. Right. Be decisive. Be decisive. Make a decision. All right. Be aggressive. Be aggressive. Right. And I, I can't stress that enough, guys. All right. So what do we offer at Gladiators Academy? Well, Gladiators Academy, we offer we uh, we do kids program ages three to fifteen. And really, we we, uh, we focus on uh, character development, all right? So each month, we have a word of the month, and we talk about things like gratitude, health, leadership, and uh, we really want to uh, instill traits in them that they'll carry with them for the rest of their life, right? We also uh, do a series of life skills programs where, you know, hey, we, we teach kids to, uh, uh, to show different forms of discipline, right? Hey, uh, complete three chores and bring it back. We ask them to uh, perform different chores of focus. Hey, I want you to uh, write down the three books that you're reading right now. Can you do that for me? Are you in physical shape? You know, so we want our child to be able to defend themselves. But we also want them to be um, active and productive members in society. Uh, we have what's called a storm team. This is the um, uh, the storm team is some of our more advanced students that are actually training to be instructors themselves, and uh, at a very young age, teenage uh, teenage ages. You know, we teach them how to instruct a class, what to deal, if it's, what, what to do if a child is hurt, uh, how to teach and instruct others. And this is one of my favorite programs, guys, because we actually, you know, we have a certain reading list that we go over. Uh, we get together and we talk about these different life skills and how we can implement them in their life. 
one, right? And uh, you know, generally, you know, we get kids at a young age, and we instill confidence and the ability to defend yourself at a very, very young age. You know, so by the time these people are, you know, 16, 17, they're well-adjusted adults that know how to speak in public and speak their mind, and never let, uh, never let them let themselves be a victim. All right. We also do a series of Nerf nights, uh, which are parents' night out. So we actually get the kids together and we shoot them with Nerf guns, and it's a good chance to get the community together and also uh, for you to get away as parents and let your kids have fun. We do birthday parties as well. Um, so uh, if you have any questions, see us about that. And so we have uh, adult uh, mixed martial arts and Brazilian jiu-jitsu program. So uh, guys, look, we, we teach. Uh, it's not a combative based program, meaning that we're not going to go in there and beat you up. But hey, we're going to teach you distance, range, timing. Uh, we're going to teach you uh, just some fundamentals of striking. And then our Brazilian Jiu Jitsu program is going to be it's going to be a little bit more focused on um, self defense, uh, gra as a grappling based martial arts. And then um, yeah, hey, what to do if uh, someone attacks you, and um, also a little bit more on the sports side of Jiu Jitsu as well. You know, so there's a uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for self defense. There's uh, there's Brazilian Jiu Jitsu that you may use in a martial arts competition, and there's like some strict, like some strict uh, sports Jiu Jitsu. Uh, however, uh, both forms of martial arts teach us to uh, to think systematically, to be calm in chaotic situations, right, and then to and to react when we need to. All right, we also have locations, and we have uh, locations in Lafayette, Youngsville, Burrow Bridge, and Crowley, and we're also affiliated with uh, I Love Kickboxing. Uh, in Youngsville, and is also a, a location in Lafayette. All right. So, uh, so at this time, guys, if you would, uh, if you would like a copy of this presentation, just go ahead in the comments section below. Um, just go ahead and uh, just send me your email, and I'll go ahead and I'll get you a copy of this presentation. I'm also going to send you uh, five devastating techniques that every realtor should know, or or any person should know if they're they're in a uh, uh, they're in a, an assaulted. They're in a situation where they're assaulted. All right. So my my goal for this conversation was to debunk the myth that with some generic wrist locks or some pepper spray you can fight off an assailant. We have to be mentally prepared, in in every aspect. We have to be physically trained, and we want to have as many weapons as possible to defend ourselves. My name is Eric Scallon, and thank you so much, guys. Oh. And recommend it reading the podcast. They look, uh, yeah. Uh, when Violence is the Answer by Tim Larkin. The Book of Five Rings by Miyamoto Mushishi. I'm pretty sure I said that wrong. <laughs> Extreme Ownership by Mr. Jocko Willinks. Um, that was a great book on uh, leadership. Uh, the Alchemist by Paulo Kahula. All right. And this is a great book about uh, following your dreams and not letting money or the fear of not having a personal relationship block you from your dreams and goals. Uh, I would also check out Mini Habits. It's a great way to instill um, either break habits or to instill new habits, right? So one of my goals was to read a little bit more, to exercise more um, in this book actually uh, uh, definitely uh, helped me out. The Effective Executive by Peter Drucker. And guys, this book I believe was written about 1950 or 1960. And a lot of these concepts are still practical today. So if you're having struggle being organized or delegating tasks, this is the book to read. I definitely urge you to reach out, uh, uh, reach out and check out I Love Marketing podcast and the Gen Genius Network podcast by Mr. Joe Polish and Dean Jackson. Uh, great for marketing, great for personal development. And one thing I've learned in my life, guys, is that uh, our business will only be good as our personal health. All right, and that's one of the most important things, guys. And anything by Tim Ferriss, of course. All right, and that is my presentation, guys. I thank you once again. Have a good one, guys.